I thought I would feel safe watching the lifestyle vlogs of Ryland Adams until I realized that in order to rake in the views on some pretty bland videos, he always has to give one particular person a call. I'll give you a hint. The call is coming from inside the house. And as any of the teenage babysitters I've terrified will tell you, that's always bad news. In this case, it's because Ryland's videos are not only edited by Shane Dawson, the canceled yet creeping back up king of YouTube, but they also heavily feature him in what I would consider to not always be a flattering light. We seem to get a slightly snippier shade of Shane in these less purposefully edited interactions on Ryland's channel, with moments that seem to reveal a childish sense of entitlement, an uncomfortable lack of affection, and a whole bunch of Shane's creepy, contrived character states each crafted to make us like him more. In this case, ranging from macho creative genius to really sleepy baby. And he would have had the whole world fooled, except some of us took improv classes in high school. Ugh. The really sad part is me thinking that would sound cooler once I said it out loud. Anyway, today I'm taking you through the cringiest and most troubling Shane Dawson behaviors that slipped through the cracks of the content on his fiance's channel. In a check your children, installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web. And we break it into tiny pieces, like a couple's engagement that they decide to share on the internet, to decide if each individual clip is worthy of my gift registry, or if I damn the sanctimony to hell. Can I say damn in the first 30 seconds of a video? <laughs> as though that intro was any less than 30 seconds. Give this video a thumbs up for more Shane. Don't forget to click subscribe. Here's the deal. I was flat on my back the last week because I had laparoscopic surgery to fix a congenital GI issue in my gut. Congenital means I can't blame Shan, Shan, Daw Shan Dawson for giving it to me. But in that time, I did look at Ryland's channel and I was like, no, no, no. It's more of the same. And But in a bad or worse flavor. So I still remember to this day being shocked when I saw Shane Dawson in the chair. I got the same feeling from watching his behavior in this, where he just seems slightly for some reason less like he's putting up the false self that he wants us to all believe in. And like I get a sense of what it would actually be like to spend time with him. And my prognosis is not good. Not that I'm a doctor, but you know, I know a dickhead when I see it. <laughs> because I'm gay. So after watching several of the videos on Ryland's channel, I noticed a pattern. First and foremost, it's like this persistent and constant feeling that Shane is in some way embarrassed of Ryland, his fiance. So are you actually gonna wear these or is it just for your video? Oh no, I'm gonna wear them. Really? My deodorant's just open inside of my purse. I come downstairs and he goes, I did something bad. <laughs> You're gonna be mad at me. I'm so embarrassed. I just realized what you're doing. Oh my God, I hate this. All right, first one, okay. Oh Thank God. you so much. I'm so sorry. I hate us. I hate us too. Okay, well, where was that sense of awareness on your own YouTube channel, Shane? You should have hated yourself then as well. I promise that Ryland's slightly unusual order at the Wendy's drive-thru is gonna land very low on the list of things you should still be mortified about. Like, it should fall somewhere around the fact that your logo is still literally a dead pig. Okay, you're what the dung beetles live off of. I'm just letting you know that's your brand right now. So, misophonia is the, like, basically dysphoria some people get at the sound of chewing or eating. Shane has misophonia, and that's a fact he wanted to heavily incorporate into this video. Conveniently, after I saw a Reddit thread wondering if he still seemed to have it. Oh mama, not only does he still have it, but apparently it means that Ryland, his fiance and the love of his life, has to go the rest of his life without eating publicly. So we have a kid, we're not living in LA. Well, that's also, what I mean, so we- Here's the thing, I was yelling because you're, you're chewing, right? Mm -hmm, okay. So why are you yelling? <laughs> I can't marry you if this is gonna happen. I love you so much. I don't know how to explain to you the misophonia thing, but like, I wanna punch you in the head. Um, well, that's favoritism, Shane. Why is your life partner the only one who you threaten with head injury? I would like to be unconscious too, rather than sit here and listen to you nag the person you claim to love for eating chicken nuggets 
in his eating chicken nuggets video that he requires you to be a part of so it gets enough views to pay for his Tesla? <gasps> wow, if I'm gonna break down this couple's dynamic, I better learn circular breathing like that didgeridoo player who came to a second grade assembly of mine in 1999. That was my Woodstock, man. Anyway, let's check in on Shane and Ryland, the happy, mature adult couple. Wow, the sauce really makes the difference. I'm not even eating right now. Okay, I'm not even surprised that Shane has internalized homophobia if those are the sounds he makes when he tries bottoming. It's good to know that Shane's romantic relationship is an equal 50-50 split. That's 50% him squealing and 50% him shrieking. Because apparently his discomfort with the sound of a person chewing trumps every other human being's on Earth's discomfort with riding in the car with someone who's as boisterous as Gibby from iCarly. Like, I would rather hear myself chew than go down the street with Shane Dawson and that's a human rights organization type of matter, I promise. Shane, you're too old to be whatever type of cute you think this is. I, that's all I can say. I mean, like, Ryland's videos get 500,000 views sometimes, and he's usually using a clickbait about his family planning with Shane or uses Shane in the thumbnail. And then the video is just this, you know? It's like very much Ryland trying to create some type of lifestyle content that feels a little hollow to me. I mean, I'm not saying it's up to Ryland to use his platform to talk about any particular social thing. But if he wanted to, when he's, you know, in this Tesla, which is a nice, you know, trendy way of doing it, but also promoting gender equity is another important way that we can stop climate change. To the point where gender equality is one of the UN's sustainable development goals. 72% of new green jobs are accounted for by men in the workforce. So they don't even have really strong numbers to represent women in the green energy workforce because there isn't enough representation across the boards of them. Women are disproportionately impacted by climate change because they already have less access to resources. There are moments in this video where Shane and Ryland, more so Shane, seem completely oblivious to his and his partner's privilege as white men presenting people. Nobody has any responsibility to use their platform to help with gender inequity, but it would be nice to see that there is actually some learning on Shane's part about his privilege. But he he truly likes to feel like the victim and everything. I'm convinced of that. And aside from like never giving up on like the singing thing and always interrupting and pretending like he's not listening to Ryland, all these running gags that feel a little too runny. In Ryland's video, Shane also likes to trot out this character that I like to call Sweepy Baby Shane, where he kind of sickeningly acts like a toddler who just got woken up from a nap. I hate how you can almost see him switch in and out of it from his normal talking voice. I, this was on top of the package and it says love sack and it was on top of this and I ordered a cover from them. You don't make, don't, I just woke up. Shane, we all just woke up. My cousin, Rip Van Winkle, fell asleep in the field for 20 years, missed the entire American revolution. But guess what, Shan? We don't let him use that as an excuse for his racism either. Can I get you an espresso so you can, I don't know, start acting like an adult rather than a child who just woke up on Christmas morning in a whipped cream commercial? It's so pretty. Oh my God, look at the child. Hi. <laughs> Do you think it's pretty? <laughs> Ugh, those videos give me that same weird feeling I got when the Rugrats babies were hanging out with a fully grown diapered adult who just thought he was a baby. In this scenario, I would be Tommy because hairline or Cynthia because hairline plus she's a really cool dancer. Cynthia, she's a really cool dancer. Cynthia, boogie to the groove. The original ska classic. Oh, hold on. Uh, little Shane, sweepy baby Shane, won't stay in bed when he hears the big kids out here having fun. Watch how he fades in and out of his doped up little boy blue act. If you're gonna be sweepy baby Shane, you gotta commit to be sweepy baby. And throw away my moon water, right? Oh. <laughs> You fill a jar with water and then you put it out in the moonlight and you set your intentions and what you want to do with your life and you leave it out all night 
and it sucks up the moon. I feel like I'm still dreaming because I just woke up. It sucks up the moon, and then the next day you drink it, and then- Wait, you're drinking that water? Well, I think so. And then you put your crystals out, so I have a few of my faves, and you put them out here, and they charge, baby, overnight, like batteries. No, Shane, you won't be charged with battery because you only verbally threatened to do that to your boyfriend when he was eating in the car. What I still find so fascinating is that Shane edits these vlogs himself, which is resulting in A, way too much Shane, and B, like, moments where Shane obviously thinks treating Ryland in this way is somehow endearing. I'm supposed to believe he's like, oh baby, I did it. And then in the moon, I got scared of the moon. Like, I'm like, you gotta stop. Meanwhile, I would just be like, I need you to not be so lazy. <laughs> oh, this is perfect for this one. If that were my fiance, I would be like, if you don't get down here and help me unroll this carpet, I will no longer be monitoring your snoring. I will just let the sleep apnea take you next time, I swear to God. But Ryland honestly seems a little more patient and nice than I would be if I were in this situation. Or he's otherwise currently unable to stick up for himself. No judgment. It's their lives. And I'm happy to just be sitting on the periphery, commenting on whatever parts of it they decide to share online. Such as supporting one another in their most objective objectively dead-end dreams. Number one director. That's cute. I mean, Rotten Tomatoes would disagree. <laughs> no, I manifest it. No, no, I love that. Yeah, we know I there's things that. in the past, things have been said. What? By who? <laughs> well, you said Rotten Tomatoes. I told you not to read it. Did they not like Not Cool? There are viruses that live off of radiation in the deep sea that did not like not cool. I know because I'm representing all of them in a class action lawsuit they're forming against you for even bringing up the title of that movie in 2022. Again, I'm not sure if any of you at home have seen Shane's 2014 film, Not Cool, or the competition reality show that he was a part of while creating it, or perhaps you've just seen my episodes of Clip Breakdown on the topic. In either case, you have walked through the valley of the shadow of death by being subjected to the not nearly satirical enough racism, ableism, and just like general filth that he put on screen with that movie. And again, if you happen to be a eating virus in the ocean, I will help you receive compensation for your pain. Anyone else on earth who made such an idiot of themselves or like looked so toxic while producing such a vile and toxic piece of work would probably have the good sense to stop reminding us that it exists while positioning it as this like indie darling that somehow RottenTomatoes.com just didn't understand. Uh, that 14% critical review was from multiple people and the audience score doesn't seem like it was anything you should trust. This movie was very unpredictable and exciting. Great for watching when you need a smile. I have to completely and totally disagree with everybody else when they say this movie is terrible. The ratings previously given are harsh and unfair. Not Cool was designed for Shane's fans and they loved it. The humor displayed in the movie could only be loved by the people he made it for. All of that is why I give this wonderful masterpiece a 5 out of 5 rating. All around amazing. So perfect. It deserves way more than just 14. Sounds like Shane might still be buying into some of this hype at least on Ryland's channel to try and save face, knowing that some of you will probably never watch Not Cool, and therefore will never fully understand how bad it was. Let me just tell you, take how bad you think it's going to be, and then look at that thing's diarrhea. I also just love the fact that they're like, no, this year though, you're gonna be the number one director. It's like, mama, we're a third of the way through the year, and he's barely sh out these videos that like can hardly survive on their own. Oh, this so, is beautiful. Wait, I need this for something we're gonna do tonight. Really? Not correlated to this video at all. <laughs> It'll make sense. But you'll see it in like three months. Oh my god. Hear that everyone? Shane's next YouTube video is coming out sometime in the next three months and from the time he shot that. That mug is gonna have to work double time if it's manifesting a best picture Oscar for Shane within the year. Shane, why don't you put your money where your mouth is and try creating something that has even a shredded iceberg lettuce's semblance of artistic merit. That would be much different than you giving us this like prolonged Muppet baby version of your personality to sell t-shirts. This brings us to Shane's most recent appearance on Ryland's video where they talk very frankly about their plans to become parents. Shane and I are starting to actually get serious about figuring out how we're going to become 
dads. We've been French braiding our penises together for about six weeks now, but we still can't seem to figure out the home pregnancy test. This whole video is basically Shane being like, we're gonna find an app that we don't wanna pay $3 for, cause God forbid this video is gonna make $200,000 this year. Either way, let's find a free app that will morph our faces together so we can see our faces as a baby and then see uh, like the surrogate headshot with our faces to see what our baby might look like. So like, it's all drivel, obviously. But I mean, still more relevant than whatever Shane's putting out on his channel, to be fair. But first, I think we need to put my face and your face together to make a baby, to see mm. to see what our actual baby would look like. I don't even like it when both of your faces are next to each other on the same screen. So I know this can't be good. That's our baby that we paid for? <laughs> That's it? Wait, and where did it get those teeth from? Because we're not showing our teeth in either of our photos. What a scam! Oh my God, we paid $3 for that. <laughs> um, I'm sorry that neither of you can handle the truth. If I saw that shark toothed droopy eyed snorkel monster slithering out of the sea, I would say that's Shane and Ryland's forehead of a child. I, I take back what I said about the app. Clearly science went into this. They tried again to find out what their daughter might look like. Okay, wait, oh, we could try a girl. <gasps> Ooh. Okay. Well, <laughs> Oh, congratulations. Your baby is a 39 year old synth rock guitarist. I'm still obsessed with the one that got, oh, the one that got put in a snorkel. Like, <laughs> what age is that baby where it would be snorkeling independently? <laughs> They're like trying to figure out if these are actually more faces, like combined faces. It's like, no, these are just artificial intelligence generated baby faces for no reason. This is such a waste of time. Of course, Shane though, he gets attached to this image of the two of their faces overlaid. I think, okay, here's how we could do it. Okay. This is sad. I, I know. I, that's it's like hard to even joke about this. This is so sad <laughs> that we can't do it. I mean. <laughs> Hold on, everyone. Now Shane thinks it's homophobic that neither him or his partner can produce egg cells. Welcome to the same boat as um, many, many people. I'm not crying. In fact, Ryland brings up later in this video, but at the far end of it, and Ryland is the only one to do it, to bring up that they actually are privileged for being able to even pay for a surrogate or to do in vitro fertilization with a surrogate, as many couples who are unable to get pregnant don't even have that as an option. But for some reason, the second half of the video, Ryland's like, it became sort of like a car podcast. And that's when I was like, wait, what happened to the Shane Dawson podcast? We didn't forget, we want that piece of shit. I want something else to be able to sh** on while I'm shitting. <laughs> Why am I talking like that? That's awful. I need something good to listen to while I'm having a dump. What if that was me? What if that was me? You would be even so shocked. Oh my God. I drank a half a Diet Coke before this. Let me hydrate. If you could see my torso, there's like incisions. It's crazy town. I'm really brave, what can I say? So Shane and Ryland go on, they're doing like a fast food vlog. Everyone wants to see it. Realize I, I'm James Corden. What do you <laughs> the glasses, the camera, the car, this is happening. Am I James Corden? <laughs> like now that I'm like, I'm putting the pieces together and I'm like, I'm actually James Corden. <laughs> In what way? You both become less likable over time or you ruin everything you're a part of? Like who wants to be James Corden? They say if you want to know someone's true character, look at their role models. And we've got Shane Dawson over here marketing himself as a celebrity who's known for being less nice in real life than he is on camera. While he's meanwhile liking Jesus Instagrams from Chris Pratt, the secretly Trump supporting anti-LGBT dinosaur douche. Yeah, okay, good move. Happy to meet ya. Something tells me Shane is, like, I can't corroborate this, but I feel like Shane is one of the both-siders who's like, oh, well, you know, I have friends with Rep Republicans and I can see their thing too. Canceled! F you. F those Republicans and f all of their friends. <laughs> if you can see the Republican side in any way, then you're voting against your own interests, especially if you're a queer person or a person of color or God forbid, a woman or trans woman. Anyway, I don't know Shane's true politics, but he follows Chris Pratt on Instagram and he goes to church with his mom. That's not added up to me. <laughs> Here's some more Shane. Like after just getting in a fight with Ryland about he can't stand chewing and yet they are getting Happy Meals in this video. So it's basically Shane just acting really annoying 
annoyed from the sound of people chewing. I get, to a certain extent, misophonia, like, which Shane calls misophonia, as though it's miso soup. Anyway, I had a roommate, sophomore year of college, whose chewing and eating sounds drove me to the brink of insanity. Ah, uh, I thought it was gonna go insane for the way that I had dreams about it. Like, it would disgust me. Never said a thing, never reacted in any way because he was what? Doing what was in his right, eating within his bedroom. So it is a little odd and shocking to me that Shane is seemingly like unable to spend time with Ryland when he eats. Like how long are you gonna put your partner through this exactly? What's the end game here? Or are you just playing it up for the camera? Cause Lord knows you go out to in Cheesecake Factory together, you talk about it all the time. Do you really have to eat at a separate table from him? Or it's only if you're not eating and he's eating. It's a lot to unpack, right? Like, I feel like I'm near their goddamn therapist hidden behind the sender console there just because they don't shut the f up. Can you go inside and do that without me? Because I want my toy too. But so I don't want to be in there with you. <laughs> okay. I don't know who told you pouting was an option for you. Okay, Shane, here's the thing about being over 30 from someone who also lives there. The harder you try to seem adorable in your daily actions, the more it makes you seem desperate. And there are like two to three examples of that on every season of Real Housewives. The only solution for being truly authentically adorable is having a winning smile and not talking about it, you dumb not trying to make a baby face with a goddamn just bandage wrapped around your head because you're too afraid of noises. Like I'm literally creeped out. I guess everyone has a different relationship style, but like I cannot be in a relationship with someone who acts like that. Will you deal with my stupid baby boy attitude? No, I won't. Adoption. Also, it would probably be like in a relationship with Shane. It seems like they talk in this video about how there's nothing they really don't like about living with one another. And that to me makes it seem like Ryland and him don't have like a really strong personality. Like I would, I don't know. Cause they don't seem to have a lot in common either. They just seem like they might be like kind of like being together more than they like being alone, which obviously I don't know anything about their relationship other than what we see here. But that's just solely based on what we're seeing here and Ryland's subtle digs of like, he won't marry me, but he'll buy me gifts. And it's like, well, you really just said that and put that on for millions of people to see. All right, sis. Did she hear me say so much drama? I didn't, oh no, did they hear me? Uh, no, I mean, she was very nice. It was like, I was joking because it was like we're being drama. <laughs> yeah, we are Wait, the drama. Can you go tell her that I, I didn't mean she's it like that. She's coming out. She said she's See, this is out. my this is my problem. What? I'm going to be thinking about that for 2 weeks. <laughs> I'm going to be thinking that she thinks I'm an asshole for 2 weeks. Well, imagine how long we've been thinking it. Imagine how long we've been thinking it. I'm once again left to wonder if Shane's remaining fan base are really just the people who relate more to his seemingly extreme level of social anxiety than they will ever feel repelled by his past problematic associations. And if that's the case, I wish all of those people the very best. And I'm sending you all of the love in my heart because you must have to be really fucking anxious to put up with this sense of humor. I stopped listening because I can hear the potatoes going through your teeth. All right, well, I also just realized You've probably seen more sperm than me in life. What do you mean? I'm so confused. Well, because you've been with way more guys than I have, so you've seen more sperm than me. But only if you're talking about human sperm, right, Shane? So it kind of all balances out by the time you get to the altar. Just some advice from out here. Someone who's hiding my cat from you. Also, what a juvenile connection to even make. Someone can have lots of sex and never see any sperm, right? It just depends on how hungry their pussy is. Not a drop left behind. <laughs> ah, that's he opened the door. I just walked through it. Mama, I can't deal. If I had to even go to a Wendy's drive-thru with those two people, I would need to unpack it with three therapists therapists afterwards. Once again, I'm not in here to knock anyone's relationship, marriage, or their method of becoming a family, but all I can say is that's not for me. If that's what it's like to be someone with millions of dollars and to be globally known, then you can keep it because it also comes with a lot of seemingly boring downtime where they don't have to work on real jobs and they just decorate their stupid big house and then find reasons to not like each other. And I can't imagine they have a real steamy love life behind the scenes if that's the way that they keep it up for public appearances. Who knows though, takes all kinds, don't it? You let me know what you feel about the first family of YouTube in the comments below. Also, Ryland says he's excited to make children and parenting a 
part of his future vlogs. Do you agree with that? What do you think about Papa Shane and entering the parent blogosphere? Let me know in the comments below. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns on Shane Dawson. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when we're being a passive aggressive spouse. You guys are all the greatest. I will see you next time.